Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Dear learners, welcome to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain, working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Matra. We are going to begin our second lecture today. So, let us look at the topics which we have covered in our yesterday's session, that is lecture 1. We have started with the introduction to economics, what economics is, what is the need and importance of studying economics as we have seen that it deals with the problem of scarcity as we have unlimited needs and wants and we have limited resources. So, economics basically help us to understand how we are going to apply these resources in a manner where we would be able to satisfy our maximum needs and wants. The another topic which we have covered in our first class that is economic assumption where we have seen about citrus parables in rationality. Citrus parables means keeping other thing constant and we assume this kind of an assumption when we have to find out the causal relationship on one variable over the another, right. Whereas, rationality is one assumption which has already been made by the economists that all the consumers and the producers they behave rationally where they analyze the cost and benefits of any decision making. Thereafter, we have talked about economic analysis where we have discussed about difference in micro and macro analysis. Micro analysis is the analysis of the economy at a smaller scale, whereas macro analysis analyze the situation at the bigger uh, picture, the larger size of the economy is being discussed. Thereafter, we have talked about the difference between the positive and normative analysis. In positive analysis, we analyze the things what they are in fact, whereas in normative, analyze, uh, uh, normative analysis, we analyze the situation what ought to be, what value judgment we can add to it. Then we have seen the difference between the short run and the long run analysis. Short run is a time frame which is not good enough for the producer and the consumer to change to a new situation, whereas long run is a planning horizon where we can adjust to the new situation. And lastly, we have seen the difference between partial and general equilibrium analysis. In partial analysis, we analyze the impact of any change in a policy in a single market only. Whereas, in general equilibrium analysis, we change the, uh, we, we find out the change in any policy and how it has impacted in overall economy that we study in the general equilibrium analysis. Thereafter, we have talked about the economic decisions like what to produce, when to produce, how to produce, for whom to produce, right? Are we using our resources economically? Is the economy growing? So, all these decisions are being discussed under that. Thereafter, we have talked about what managerial economics is and how we can establish a relationship of managerial economics with the decision sizes so as to find out the optimal solutions of our problem. And lastly, we have talked about the concept of scarcity, right? Scarcity is a gap between the limited resources and the unlimited needs and wants and how we are going to utilize our resources so as to have a maximum out of it. So, optimal utilization of resources were discussed. So, these are the contents which are being discussed in our previous session. Now, let us look at the learning objectives of today's session. In this session, you will be able to understand the nature and scope of managerial economics. What are the basic feature and characteristics of managerial economics that we are going to talk about. Thereafter, we will be able to understand the objectives of the firm. As we know, the firms operate with some objectives. So, uh, definitely these objectives act as a guiding principle for the organization for the firms to operate. So, how they frame out their objectives, there are various theories given for the framing of objective of the firm. So, those theories will be discussed in this lecture. Thereafter, we will be able to understand the difference between economic theory and managerial theory. How do we differentiate between these two theory? Because we are more concerned with the managerial theory of those economics to as to apply those 
things into the managerial business practices. And lastly, we will understand the roles and responsibilities of managerial economists as this is a person who plays a very important role in the organization, what all role he plays and what responsibilities are there which are to be taken up by the managerial economics, that is all you are going to understand by the end of this lecture. So, let us start first with the nature of managerial economics. You can consider it to be as in characteristics of managerial economics or you can also call them as in feature of managerial economics. So, the very first point says that it is microeconomics in character. Now, what does it mean? As we are talking about managerial economics and managerial economics is basically concerned with the problems of an individual firm. And when we are calling it is, it is, its nature is micro in nature that means it deals with the problems of that specific firm, right. Managerial economics is not going to talk about what is happening in the economy, but yes definitely they are being concerned with the problem of that individual uh, uh, firm like what to produce, how to produce, when to produce, for whom to produce. So, these are the problems which are basically being dealt by the managerial economics which are related and specific to the firm and that is why we are saying its characteristic is micro in nature because it is more concerned with the problems of an individual firm. Secondly, we are saying it used theory of firms. Now, what does this mean? In economics, we have different theories which are given, but all those theories are not related to the theory of the firm as because managerial economics is concerned with the problems of the individual firm. So, it takes help of only those theories which are relevant to the business like demand and supply theory, cost and production theory, profit for uh, profit uh, management theory, capital management theory, pricing theory. So, we are concerned only with those theories of economics which are relevant to the firm and that is why we are saying that it uses only the theories of the firm. The another point is normative economics. As we have understood the difference between positive and normative analysis, now we can easily able to relate why managerial economics is normative in nature. Normative analysis understand what should be done, what ought to be, it is not concerned with what is there. Obviously, if we are going to understand what problem is there, then how are we going to find out the solution of those problems. As managerial economics understand what is the problem and they add their uh, you know opinion and judgment to those problems so as they would be able to get the solution of it. So, it deals with the problem in a normative way how we can better those situations or how we can provide solution to those problems to deal with them. Then the next point says that managerial economics is having a pragmatic and applied approach. Pragmatic means dealing with the things in a practical aspect. Since economic theories are uh, you know defined by some assumptions, but here when we talk about managerial economics, we have to deal with the things in a real and a practical way because we are having the applied business situations, we have the practical problems on which we are going to apply those theories. So, we cannot put those theories in the manner what we have studied them. Right, we have to understand the practical implication of those theories and whatever the changes are being required in those practical aspects that need to be incorporated. So, it has a pragmatic and a applied approach of dealing with the problems. Next, it is both conceptual as well as matrical. That is again very true. Managerial economics is taking help of conceptual tools and techniques, the theories which are given initially in the economics. And it is also taking help of uh, matrical sciences, the decision sciences, how we are going to analyze those situation and those problems to get the better solutions of it. So, it is the integration of tools and techniques as well as the theories, tools and te technique as well as the theories given in economics so that we will get the solution of those problems. And lastly, we are saying it gives an adequate importance to macroeconomics. This is again very, very important since the nature of managerial economics is micro, it deals with the problem of the individual firm, but to take up those problems and to understand them well, it is very important to understand what is happening around us. Okay. So, it gives an adequate importance to macroeconomics because ultimately the firm has to operate within the society, it cannot work in isolation. So, it is very important for us to know what is happening in the uh, you know economy, how the trend is are, uh, trends are taking 
place right if we have to make uh, the decisions regarding what product to make then we have to understand and to analyze at the large scale like what is, what are the taste and preferences of the consumer what are the things which they are demanding what is the consumption level of the people right so investment pattern we have to see so there are different aspects which we have to take into consideration before making any decisions relating uh, related to the individual firm so that is why we are saying it gives an adequate importance to macro economics so these are basically constitute as a nature of managerial economics where we have talked about it is a micro economics in nature because it deals with the problem of the individual firm it uses only those theories which are relevant to the business operations like i said demand and uh, you know sales forecasting theory cost and production theory profit management theory capital management theory so these are the theories uh, we study in this it is normative economics it deals with the problem in a manner where what should be done what ought to be so as to get the problem solutions right it deals with the things in a very pragmatic way in a very practical and applied way it is both conceptual as well as math matrical also it takes uh, help of theories as well as tools and techniques to analyze the situations and to find out the better solutions of the problem and finally it gives an adequate importance to the macro economics now let us move to the next part where we are going to discuss the scope of managerial economics now whenever we talk about this word scope what does that mean scope means the area which all comes under the preview of this subjects what all we are going to cover under this uh, managerial economics that is basically constitute as a scope of managerial economics so particularly we have classified these scopes into two categories initially we will talk about the operational or internal internal issues which are uh, you know internal to the organization and then further we have environmental or external issues so which are outside the organization but that also comes under the uh, scope of managerial economics so first we are going to talk about operational or internal issues so very first point here is regarding demand analysis and forecasting as we all know a business firm is an economic organization which is engaged into the production and distribution of goods and services so now what to produce how much to produce when to produce these are the fundamental questions which are very much needed to be understood so demand analysis and forecasting is one of the very important concern which has been taken up by the managerial economics so as all the decisions can be taken up in in the organization what to produce we'll be able to get the answer of this question whatever is in demand in the economy we will definitely like to produce that product what to produce will be answered by demand uh, you know analysis and how much to produce we will be able to get the answer of this question by forecasting the demand right it is again very important to forecast the demand in advance so that you can plan out your activities accordingly you can make necessary arrangements in advance so demand analysis and forecasting will help you to have the requirement of the product when are you going to finish up your production process and how you are going to make the products available to the customer the second is cost and production analysis as you all know cost constitutes a very important uh, element whenever we are making any decisions right so cost is again very important so how much cost is going to be involved right how we are going to plan out our production right because the uh, productions has to be done in different Uh, variations production uh, is having different uh, you know aspects in short run as well as in the long run there are different types of cost we have fixed cost also we have variable cost so this particular aspect is going to talk about different type of cost concept their classifications and we will also talk about economies and diseconomies of scale now what is meant by economies and diseconomies of scale so this is uh, the another topic which we are going to study further in our further lectures but just to give you a glimpse of economies and diseconomies of scale economies means the advantages right and diseconomies means the disadvantages basically so when whatever the scale we are working on whether we are working at the small scale or we are working at the large scale they both have their own advantages and disadvantages so those aspects are going to be covered under this heading where we are going to talk about cost and production analysis now coming to the uh, third point where we are having pricing decision policies and practices pricing as we all know this is the most important things which is going to generate revenue for the firm right 
So, pricing has to be done very carefully. What price are we going to keep for our product? For that, we need to understand in which market structure we are operating, what are the pricing policies of our customers, right? And what, how the customers are reacting to the price. So, all these pricing policies and practices are need to be, needed to be taken into account before we are providing any price to our product. So, different aspects are there which we need to study before we go ahead with the final price of a commodity. The next is the profit management. Profit management is again very important managing the profit of the firm because uh, here you need to understand this profit is the most important objective of any organization profit earning for whatever the activities they are taking up whatever the uncertainties and risks they are taking up in the business enterprises, the ultimate objective is to earn profit. So, to manage the profit in the organization is again a very important aspect, right? How much profit need to be distributed, how much profit need to be retained in the organization because this retained profit is actually going to help you in your further growth uh, processes, right? So, uh, this, this uh, has to be taken up like how you are going to plan out your profit, various techniques you are going to study to plan out your profit like break even analysis is there which you are going to make up to understand when and where you are going to start with your profit. So, profit management will talk about all those aspects. Then we have capital management again this is a very important thing whenever we are making any investments like how uh, we are going to select the projects for our uh, you know organization where we need to invest which project. Uh, is important for us. So, all that capital management techniques are need to be taken up like return on capital, rate of return on capital, capital budgeting. So, these are the headings which are being dealt very carefully under this capital management, right. So, these are our operational or internal issues classified under demand analysis and forecasting, cost and production analysis, pricing decision policies and practices profit management and capital management. Now, let us move to the environmental or external issues. What are these environmental and external issues? The very first point covers the issues related to the macro variables. Now, if we talk about the issues related to the macro variables, the firms who are trying to expand the size of their business, right, or those firms who would like to start up with their own new setup. Right. So, they are very much interesting is in knowing like what is the trend taking place in the economy, right? what, is, what are the things which people are demanding. Right. So, it is important for uh, the individual firm to know about the macroeconomic variable because ultimately whatever we are taking at you know, decisions we are taking at individual levels are going to be affected by the things which are taking uh, place in the macroeconomic variables, what is the uh, growth rate or growth pattern in the economy, right? Uh, whether the economy is growing or whether the economy is in a downfall phase. So, how we are going to make out our decisions at the individual level for that? It is very important to know about macro variables. So, the issues related to the macro variables are also being covered under the scope of managerial economics. Then we have issues related to the foreign trade, definitely the firms who are into export and import, right? Those who are uh, you know having into the export and import, they are very much in, uh, interested in the international trade. They, they want to know about the pricing in the international market, they know about the taxation policies in the international market, the currency rate in the international market. So, it is important for them to know about what is happening, happening in the foreign trade. Right. So, issues related to the foreign trade are also being covered under the scope of managerial economics and lastly as we say that business has to operate under the government rules and regulations. So, there are different government policies uh, which takes place, there are certain changes which are being made by the government. So, all these changes we need to understand what policies are being given, uh, there, there are certain policies which are very much favorable for the firm, there are certain policies which uh, sometimes affects the uh, working of the firm. So, their implications are lot of, uh, lot of implications are there, right. So, those government policies are needed to be incorporated as well uh, whenever we are talking about the management, right. So, these are the external issues which are being covered under this managerial economics. So, if we summarize this topic of managerial economics, what all 
comes under the preview of managerial economics. We have internal and external issues. In internal issues, we talk about each and every aspect starting from the demand of the commodity up to the capital management, how we are going to manage our capital and secondly, in the external issues, we start with the macroeconomic variables, what is happening in the macroeconomics and uh, the companies who are into import and export, they want to get the fair idea about international trade and Finally, we also look at the government policies because governments also have a lot of impact on the working of any business. Now, let us move to the next topic where we are going to discuss the objectives of the firm. Like I said, objectives are the driving force. They provide the framework basically for all your functions, your strategies, your managerial decisions, right? How you are going to start with your organization, what all you are going to take up. So, the objectives of any organizations are very important like what is the objective of the firm accordingly you plan out your strategies. So, to further understand uh, the requirement of the objective like what objective should be there, there are different views, there are different theories which are given. So, those theories which we are going to cover in this part of topic where we are going to start with the profit maximization theory, then we have Baumol's theory of sales revenue maximization. The third one is Maris hypothesis of maximization of growth rate, Williamson models of managerial utility functions and then lastly we will talk about behavioral theories. So, let us start with the very first theory where we are going to talk about profit maximization theory. As the name itself will helping you to understand what is the objective of this theory. The this theory is basically the traditional theory which believes that profit should be the objective of any organization and we also feels like initially that this was the objective for which the firms are operating they want to earn more and more profit. So, according to the profit maximization theory the objective of the firm is the generation of largest amount of profit the more and more profit uh, they can generate would be the objective. But traditionally the efficiency of the firm is measured in terms of the profit journey, uh, generating capacity right. So, that was the belief people used to have traditionally that the firms uh, you know efficiency can be measured like firm is working efficiently if they are capable of generating more and more profit and profit as we know is the only internal source of fund because this can be constituted uh, you know further for the further growth and expansion of the any organization and we also used to believe that the market value of the firms largely depends upon the profit earned right. Profit is must for the long run survival for any business that was also believed and how do we calculate profit? Profit is basically calculated simply whatever the total revenue is there, sales which we have made. So, the revenue which we have generated through those sales, if we minus the cost of incurring that, uh, of that, incurring that uh, product, so the remaining portion would be considered to be as profit, right. So, this is the theory which is uh, related to the profit maximization and many of the theorists, uh, economists also believe in this theory, but there are certain things which are uh, you know against to this theory right, where people were also believing that uh, profit is not the only, uh, should not be the only motive of the firm, it should not be the only objective of the firm because there are many problems which were there like which profit need to be taken into account whether it should be a gross profit or it should be a net profit or we should take profit before the tax or we should take profit after the tax what type of profit we need to take into account and like what uh, year we need to calculate like present year profit we need to consider or the previous year profit we need to incorporate or we are talking about the profit uh, in next 5 years or the profit we are going to earn in the next 10 years. So, there are different kind of questions which were raised for this theories like uh, which were not very clear and usually it is being said that profit should not be the only motive of any organization in today's time because it is very difficult right if you are focusing only on earning profit then we won't be able to uh, you know satisfy the consumers and the society people and again it will be a difficult for the business for their long term survival so this profit maximization theory is good for the consideration because definitely uh, the uncertainties and risk which are being taken up by the uh, you know entrepreneur, the profit is the reward for those risk and uncertainty. So, the second theory which was proposed by Baumol's that was the theory of sales revenue maximization, right. So, this theory comes up where we are saying that rather than 
focusing on only earning profit rather we should focus on maximizing the sales revenue right so sales maximization theory asserts that manager attempts to maximize firm's total revenue instead of profit right so it is again uh, it gives you a clear idea where in this theory we are focusing on increasing the more of sales if you are increasing the sales of the organization then definitely it will help you to get the better market share only in terms of earning profit so according to him sales volume not the profit volume define the market leadership of the competition right so earlier we have seen that profit was used to measure the market share but here in this theory we are seeing that sales volume will help you to define the leadership competition uh, you know uh, in the competition who will be the leader that depends upon the sales volume rather than on the profit volume and in long organization as we all know management is separate from the owner right in small organization where there is a single person who is managing each and everything they are more concerned with the profit but when we talk about the larger organization those organizations are basically separate from the managers and the owners owners are interested in the profit but sal uh, management of the people who are managing those organization are more interested in the rewards like their salaries and the better benefits they are getting into the organization so managers salaries and the other benefits are largely linked with the sales volume rather than profit so you can see the consideration of these theories why we are focusing more on sales volume rather than profit uh, because uh, the revenue is basically related to the salary of the people the more they are capable of selling the product the better salary they would be offered right so that is why uh, this bommel's theory of sales revenue maximization focus on sales revenue maximization and he has also hypothesized that manager offer attain their personal prestige to the company's revenue or sale because whatever the management is taking uh, by the organizations uh, people they they are more concerned with the uh, sales they have able to achieve right so therefore they would rather attempt to maximize firm's total revenue instead of profit, profit because that is what uh, is going to represent their uh, you know efficiency in working the organization so sales volumes are the better indicators of the firm's positions in the market and growing sales strengthen the competitive spirit of the firm also so now the focus has shifted from profit maximization to the sales maximization and firm need to maintain minimum level of profit to keep the shareholder satisfied they also believe in the earning of profit but in in comparison to both they are focused more on sales uh, maximization rather than profit maximization but yet minimum profit need to be kept into account so that we would be able to satisfy our shareholders also who have uh, you know invested their money in the company then we have the another theory which is given by maris and uh, it is called as maris hypothesis of maximization of growth rate now what maris tried to do uh, did with this theory he tried to integrate the previous two theories where they have made the combination we have owners and we have management management is focusing on the sales and owners are focusing on the profit so why don't we combine them both and we focus on the growth rate if, if organization growth will take place definitely more profit will be there and more sales revenue will be there right so according to the growth maximization theory uh, owners who are the shareholders aims as profit and market share whereas managers are aiming at better salary job security as well as on the growth so the two set of goals can be achieved by maximizing the balance growth of the firm that is what i try to make you understand so which depends on the growth rate of the demand of the firm product the more demand will be there and how the growth rate of the capital supply to the firm right so in short we can say growth is uh, defined as uh, you know firm's growth demand as well as the supply the supply which we are making okay so definitely the growth will take place if demand will be there and with that demand we are able to supply those goods and services okay now further maris said that it faces two constraints to achieve the objective of balanced growth now what are these two constraints which are being faced in this uh, theory the first is the managerial constraint now managerial constraints are basically as we all know managerial practices 
or managerial skills are being shown up by the human resource. Human resource is the most important asset and uh, you know according to him the skills, expertise, efficiency and sincerity of team managers are vital for the growth because any organization will not work with the human resource right. It is the most important asset of any organization and more skilled employees you are having expertise uh, you are having they are more efficient so better results will be there. So, growth of any organization can be taken up if your team if the people who, who, who are working with you are sincere experienced efficient then definitely you will be able to attain that goal. But again how much competent your team is that depends ok. So, the growth is basically depends upon the competencies of people in the organization right even if you hire new people with those uh, skills right uh, with, 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 the, with the efficient uh, people, but definitely they would be lacking uh, the exper experience and the decision making skills right. There also we have financial constraint along with the managerial constraints we have financial constraints also because Maris suggested that the prudent financial policies will be based on at least three financial ratios and those three financial ratios are like your debt equity ratio liquidity ratio and retention ratio. Now, what is this debt equity ratio? Debt equity ratio is the ratio between the borrowed capital and the owner's capital right. We can raise fund in two ways in the form of debentures and in the form of shareholders right. So, equity is being considered as the owner of the capital whereas, debt is considered to be the liability of the company. So, usually companies want to keep this debt uh, borrowed capital in a lower terms because they do not want to get insolvent, but definitely if you are keeping this ratio low then definitely the chances of growth will also be lesser because you would not be able to get the uh, you, you would not be able to get uh, the more capital from the market and in that ways you would not be able to have a better growth. So, uh, debt equity ratio is again very important. Uh, but the consideration needs to be taken up because whatever the money we are raising in the form of borrowed, uh, borrowed capital that constitute as a liability to the company and we have to pay them even if the company is not earning because they are the liability right whereas owners are the of the companies who, who uh, share the profit as well as the losses. Then second is the liquidity ratio, liquidity ratio is the ratio between the current asset and the current liability and it is the indicator of coverage provided by the current asset to the current liability right. Usually we uh, consider that 2 is to 1 is the ideal ratio for this liquidity ratio where we have having the enough current asset to meet out our current liability, but current assets were not able to produce uh, you know longer profits to the company right. They are not uh, able to generate more and more uh, profit to the company or you can say the long term profit to the company. So, again they create a, a kind of a hindrance in the growth of the company, but definitely we need to maintain this ratio because we have to pay out our current liabilities as well. Then the third ratio is called as retention ratio and this is the ratio between the retained profit as well as total profit ok. So, retain profit and total profit, retain profit is basically the profit which we keep uh, uh, with ourselves for the future funds and the future requirements and the future em uh, emergencies right. But definitely again we were not able to retain much of the profit because if we are retaining more profit we were not be able to satisfy our shareholders to whom we need to distribute our profit in terms of uh, the capital they have uh, provided us. So, retain profit uh, the percentage of retain profit we are keeping in our company for the further growth of the company right for the, for the further investments in the company will also constitute a very important part. So, Maris given this model of uh, growth uh, consideration, but again this model has some constraint which in terms of managerial and financial constraints we have covered up. Moving to the next model where we have Williamson model of managerial utility function. Now, what is this model all about? You can see that Williamson model of uh, this is the combination of objective of profit maximization and growth maximization. Now, you can see that this model comprises two things together where we are covering about profit as well as we are covering about growth right. So, as per the model of managerial utility functions manager apply their discretionary power to maximize their own utility function with the constraint of maintaining minimum profit to satisfy shareholders. Now, here again 
because the management has been taken up by the managers. So, they are trying to keep things in a manner where they would be trying to keep their benefits better and more as compared to the profits which we are providing to the shareholders. Definitely, it is focusing on both profit maximization and growth maximization, but they are trying to apply this utility function in the manner where they would be able to maximize their benefits and they are also keeping the minimum profit for the shareholders to satisfy them. So, Williamson explained upon the fact that in modern business ownership is separate from the management that we have already understood that management is separate from the uh, owners. So, here the modern manager, man, uh, mon modern management have discretionary power to set the goals of the business of the firm and they, they take up the decision and they decide to make up the things in a manner where they are able to maximize their utility function. So, Williamson models can be written in the following uh, way where I can explain you uh, UM is basically the managers utility and it is the function of salary managerial emoluments as well as discretionary investment. So, what we are saying utility managers utility is the functions of the salary their managerial emoluments as well as discretionary investments right. So, this uh, if, if it will be more then definitely the manager utility will be there where discretionary investments is equals to the discretionary profit ok the profit which they try to keep for themselves and where discretionary profit is equals to actual profit minus minimum profit minus taxes right so, this discretionary profit is the profit which they try to keep for themselves whatever the actual profit they are earning they deduct the minimum profit from it which they want to keep for the shareholders to satisfy them and definitely the firm has to pay the taxes so they have to deduct this tax also from this discretionary profit. So, therefore, at last we can say that utility of managers is the function of salary and discretionary profit ok. So, this is the combination which is going to provide the utility to the manager. So, here we can say that salary and uh, discretionary profits are substitutable right. You have to substitute one if you want to increase your salary then you have to decrease your discretionary profit and discretionary profit is basically the other benefits which you are getting in terms of job security in terms of uh, you know benefits which you are getting in the organization ok. So, an increase in the salary is only possible by the decrease in the discretionary profit as and vice versa and it is easy to understand that since salary is represented in terms of S is represented in terms of salary and the other benefit and is actually in terms of item of expenditure. So, it has a negative relations with the profit ok. So, whatever the profit we are earning uh, we have to deduct it uh, from the profit. So, it is having a negative relationship with it. So, this is what we are trying to understand with this Williamson model which is focusing on the uh, you know utility function how managers are trying to enhance their utility function by using their managerial discretionary power right. Then next is behavioral theories uh, with the objective of firms we have behavioral theories also and behavioral theories proposes that the firms aims at satisfactory behavior rather than having the maximization of profit or sales or growth it is to be believed that we should aim at satisfactory behavior rather than maximization. So, in this theory we are going to talk about two things first we have Simon satisfying model and we have model by Syrett and March right. So, let us talk about the Simon satisfying model according to this model firm has to operate under the bounded rationality. Now, what is this one can only aim at achieving the satisfactory level of profit sales and growth. In the previous theories we were focusing on the maximization more and more and more of everything more of profit more of growth more of sales uh, more of sales revenue more of managers utility. But if we talking about this behavioral theory they focus on the satisfying right they, they work on the bounded rationality because the biggest challenge before the modern business is the lack of full information and uncertainty about the features right because we cannot keep each and everything intact we are talking about future future is full of uncertainties and there are various things which are not known to us. So, what we the firms have to do they have to incur cost in acquiring the information in the present right. So, 
uh, for this uh, theory which we are talking right now given by Simon satisfying model, the objective of maximizing either profit or sales or growth is not at all possible. Therefore, we should focus on satisfying uh, things where we can focus more on attaining the goal which has been decided. We can see that uh, we can see that Simon says that we need to assume the things we should have aspirations right like these are the things which we should achieve this much profit we should achieve this much growth we should achieve but if we are not able to achieve those growth we should not be uh, you know forcing anybody to reach up to that point right we should work on bounded rationality and satisfactory level like these are the things which we can attain and if we are able to attain then we can further raise our standards we can further raise our uh, you know levels of achieving those profits and growth but definitely we should not work on you know firing uh, hiring more and more of our standards then moving upon the next model we have uh, cited and march model according to this model firms need to have multi goals and multi decision making orientation this model is basically a step ahead of our previous model which was given by simon Simon was focusing on the satisfying behavior and Syred and March is saying not only we should focus on the satisfying behavior, but we should also incorporate all the stakeholders, right? We need to satisfy all the stakeholders of our business, whether they are the suppliers, whether they are the customers, whether they are the employees or the financiers or the government or the other social interest group. We need to keep them satisfied. So, firms cannot work with only one uh, focus of increasing the profit or increasing the growth, but we should keep into account each and every person who is having the interest in our business and that is why we are talking about multi goal and multi decision making orientation. So, to meet this objective managers form an aspiration level on the basis of their past experiences, their past performance of the firm and the performance of the other similar firms and the future. So, here we have talked about the objective of the firm where we have discussed the various theories given by different people who focused on profit maximization, on the sales revenue maximization, focusing on the growth of the company, managerial utility function as well as these behavioral theories given by Simon and Syvert and March. So, these are the theories which are given by different people and based on their different understanding the different objectives of the firms are being defined. Now, let us move to the next heading where we are going to talk about economic theory and managerial theory. right? So, how do we understand the relationship between the economic theory and the managerial theory that is what we are going to cover our uh, you know session with. Economic theory is the system of interrelationship right? among the social sciences and economics is the most advanced in terms of theoretical orientation. As we know that economics is a science uh, which talks about each and every aspect, right? It, it is the system of interrelationship. They are well defined theoretical structures in economics and more one of the most widely discussed structure is the axiomatic method of theory, uh, theory formulation that is the self evident method of theory formulations where we understand the things where we see the things and then we formulate those theories. Whereas, managerial theories refer to those aspects of economic theory and application which are directly relevant to the practice of management and decision making process because they are more concerned with the problems of the firms where they are supposed to make the decisions. So, it focuses more on that aspect. Now, let us look at the difference between the economic theory and the managerial theory. Economic theory basically deals with the body of principles, right? It is it is providing you a systematic body where the principles and the policies are being given. Whereas managerial theory deals with the application of certain principle to solve the problems of the firm because they are specific to the firm. So, they are more concerned with the problems which are given uh, to the firm and they deal with those problems in a certain way. The second point says that managerial economics uh, economic theory sorry economic theory has a characteristics of both micro as well as macro definitely because they are concerned with the problems of individual as well as economy at the larger scale whereas managerial economic uh, theory uh, is only concerned with the micro characteristic because they are focusing on the individual firms problem right 
they are not focused with what is happening around in the economy they are looking at the problems of the firm and they are trying to get the solution of those problem so this is particularly micro in nature third point says that economic theory deals with the study of individual firms as well as individual consumer also right as because it has the characteristics of micro and macro so they talk about the individual consumers individual firms as well as the economy at the large whereas managerial theory only studies about the individual firm and that is why it is micro in nature the next point says that economic theory deals with the study of distribution of theories of rent wages interest and profit because all these are the factors of reductions for the labor we have rent theory for the uh, you know for the land we have rent theory for the labor we have wages theory for the capital we have interest theory and for the entrepreneur we have profit theory but here managerial theory only concerned with the profit theories because they are focusing on the uh, objective of earning profit and how profit can be given to the people who are doing businesses so that is concerned more with the profit theory only further we can say that economic theory is based on certain assumptions there are certain situations we have to assume and based on those assumptions only we can apply our studies to it whereas managerial theories uh, you know these assumptions disappear because of the practical situation right we uh, as we have also discussed the nature of managerial economics it deals with the things in a practical and applied way okay so there is no point of making any assumptions when we are dealing with the situations in a practical way when we have we are having this applied approach so there are no assumptions which we can go ahead with then economic theory is both positive and normative in character it deals with the situation what they are and what they ought to be whereas in managerial theory we essentially talk about normative things right how we can solve those problems by applying our uh, value judgment and suggestion to those things which are already there right and lastly we are saying that economic theory studies only the economic aspects of the problem whereas managerial theories deals with the economic as well as non economic aspects of the things right so this is how we differentiate between the economic theory as well as the managerial theory right now let us move to the next part of our uh, topic where we are going to understand the roles the roles of managerial economists so here i want your attention we are not talking about the roles of managerial economics we are focusing the roles of managerial economist managerial economist is a person is 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 a, a designated position in the organization where he is supposed to play different roles so what roles are been played by the managerial economics that is what we are going to cover in this session now managerial economist as we know is an important executive of business firm so he has to perform various role in the business like helping in decision making this is the first and the foremost things which is required in the management we need to make right decision and this managerial economist helps the management in making the right decisions like what has to be taken up by uh, uh, thinking in two different ways one is thinking function right and the other is your selection function in thinking function we can think of the different ways and different uh, you know uh, different ways of doing things like what can be done and how it has to be done and whereas in selection functions we can find out the diff, uh, you know best solution to those problems right whatever the alternatives we are having we need to select the best of it so helping in decision making managerial economist helps in decision making um in the organization and better decisions need to be taken up on the right time because if we are make, not making the right decision and if we are delaying our decision both are uh, you know creating a cost to the organization so making a right decision on the right time is one of the most important role played by managerial economist he also helps in forward planning forward planning is the planning done for the future because this planning helps the management to plan out their activities in advance right what necessary arrangements need to be make up right all these things can be done uh, in advance so managerial economist is also helping the management in forward planning and that planning need to be made accurately because whatever you are forecasting for the future need to be forecasted accurately 
Then managerial also plays administrative role. He is also helping the management in restructuring the organization, in redefining the roles and responsibilities of people in the organization, how policies are need to be made, how strategies are need to be planned. So, all these administrative roles are also being taken up by the managerial economist. Managerial economist also acts as an economic intelligence. How managerial economist provides the knowledge of economy right to the management right uh, they tells uh, they tells about the competitors in the market they tells them about the taxation rate in the market the government policies in the market though all these informations are also available in the newspapers magazine journals government or, uh, you know uh, orientations also uh, there but the better understanding and analysis are being done by the managerial economist so it provides an economic intelligence to the management so that better decisions can be made uh, with, with those information. Managerial economist also participates in the debate, right, right. there are different parties, uh, different debates given up in a public as well as by the government. So, they act as a representative of a company, it is not only give the fame to the company, but also helps in establishing a good relationship with the people uh, who have a better uh, subject knowledge into that area. So, participation in debates are also being taken up by the managerial economist. And there are then other certain roles also uh, which are being played by the managerial economics like sales forecasting. He is also responsible for casting the sales uh, for the future so that necessary arrangements can be done. He is also required to do the industrial market research, right. Uh, he need to find out the taste and preferences of the customers, he need to find out the uh, distribution network in the market so that accordingly the uh, things can be planned, right. Uh, managerial economist also make an analysis of the competitors, what are the products they are offering, what are the prices on which they are offering their product, the uh, you know consumer response on the competitors product. So, all these competitor analysis is also being made by him. He also helps in deciding the prices, right. Prices as we all know plays a very important role because in a time of uh, in, in today's time the competition is so much where we cannot uh, you know un unlikely change the price of any product we need to take into account various aspects like competition how much our product is price elastic right in which market form we are working right so all these decisions are need to be taken up then production scale, uh, scheduling has to be made right when we are going to produce our product how we are going to plan out our product, uh, production schedule. So, all these necessary arrangements has to be done in advance for the production schedule like demand forecasting, like sales forecasting need to be made. Managerial economist also make investment analysis, right, where the company need to make the investment, how we are going to select different pros, uh, uh, different projects, right, what will be the cost to capital. So, investment analysis is also one of the role is being played by the managerial economist Then he is also uh, sup uh, supposed to maintain the public relations, right, because managerial economics if he is maintaining the relation with the public, we would be able to get the feedback regarding our product. And lastly, the social objective, it is again the social responsibility has to be taken up by the managerial economist in terms of providing good quality products on the fair prices to the customer. So, these are some roles which are being played by the managerial economist. We have seen them in, uh, in, in starting, we have seen that it helps in decision making, forward planning. He also plays the administrative role, provides economic intelligence to the company and also participates in the debate. And then we have seen the other roles placed by the managerial economist in terms of forecasting the sales, doing market research, analyzing the competitors pricing decisions of the product, how to uh, you know plan out their production schedule, investment analysis, public relations as well as social objectives. Now, let us move to the next part where we are going to talk about the responsibilities of managerial economist. As we are uh, you know talking about the roles of managerial economist, there are certain roles which he or, or she is playing in the organization, right. So, looking at it, we need to understand there are certain responsibilities also because, you know, delegation of work, responsibilities, uh, authority and responsibilities goes hand in hand. So, if you have been authorized to do certain things, you are also been responsible for the same, right. So, looking at those aspects, we have certain responsibilities given to the managerial economist and the very first point says to increase the profitability of the firm. 
the first and the foremost responsibility is goes to the managerial economist is whatever he or she is doing whatever the role whatever the uh, roles and uh, responsibilities are being given to the managerial economist the first important thing which he or she has to make sure of to increase the profitability of the firm right he is supposed to help in forward planning decision making he also plays the administrative role by doing all these things if uh, the managerial economist is not able to increase the profit of the organization then definitely the roles which he uh, the managerial economist is playing is not good enough right able to increase the profitability of the firm he has to make accurate and successful fake forecast right managerial economist has to make the forecasting accurately as well as successfully it's not only that he has to make the forecast right but if you are not uh, making them accurately if you are not making them successful then definitely it will be of no use because forecasting is done for the future and the more accuracy need to be required because whatever the planning you are making you are making based on those forecasting right so it is again very important for you uh, for for managerial economist to accurate early forecast those things next is to maintain relations with the expert managerial economist is supposed to maintain the relationship with the experts because he is responsible this person is responsible to maintain the good relations in in case of any requirement in case of anything need to be asked from the expert this is the person who is going to uh, you know consult those people and get the better understanding of that subject managerial economist is also uh, uh, responsible to make sure of the availability of resources right from where we are going to procure our resources the production scheduling has to be done right who will be the supplier and from where we would be able to get the supplies at the lower price right so all these necessary arrangements are also uh, been considered to be the responsibility of managerial economist managerial economist is also responsible to simplify the decision making process yes again this is very important because this person is helping the management to simplify the process right he is not there to complex the situation but to understand that situation and to make it simple and to implement those things in a better way and lastly we are saying that managerial uh, economist is responsible to minimize the risk as business is related to the future and future is always risky so whatever is possible for him he should be able to minimize those risk as much as possible by you know forecasting accurately by planning things in advance definitely we cannot uh, you know avoid those risks we cannot uh, finish those or we can uh, we cannot uh, you know end those risks but definitely by working into these aspects we would be able to minimize those risk for sure now if you'll review our topic for today in this section the nature and scope of managerial economics what is the basic nature characteristics of features are there and what are the things which we covered under the scope of managerial economics this we have studied into two part internal issues as well as external issues and then secondly we have talked about the objectives of the firm and to understand these objectives we have different theories given to understand them better the first theory is your profit maximization theory which says that profit is uh, the objective of the firm second theory is given by bommels which focuses on the sales revenue maximization this theory focuses on a uh, maximization of sales revenue rather than profit maximization in the third theory of maris hypothesis of maximization of growth rate we have talked about the maximization of growth rate where we can incorporate both the first two theories uh, we are focusing on profit as well as focusing on sales revenue by understanding the difference between the owners and the management and then the third uh, fourth theory given by williamson model of managerial utility function here we are focusing on utility because in today's modern organization managers are having the discretionary powers where they can uh, use those powers to increase their utility function and lastly we have talked about these behavioral theories particularly we have studied two theories given by simon sirett and march and then thereafter we have seen the difference between economic theory and managerial theory and lastly we have talked about the various roles and responsibilities played by managerial economist right there are different roles which are played by managerial economist and at the same time 
uh, whatever the roles are being given to uh, the managerial economist, whether he is performing those roles with the utmost sincerity, certain responsibilities are also being given to the managerial economist in terms of increasing the profit of the company, minimizing the risk and simplifying the decision making process and to get more and more benefit for the organization. So, if you look at the reference book uh, for the topics cover in our session today, these are the four books I have written here, the content which has been taken up for from and thank you all of you.